and welcome to your nomenclature unit. I know you're excited. You're probably thinking, what is nomenclature? So let me fill you in. Nomenclature is learning to write the names and formulas of different compounds. In this class, we're going to learn how to write the names and formulas of four different inorganic compounds. Those are ionic, molecular, acids, and bases. We're going to use the IUPAC system of naming, which stands for International Union of Pure and Applied Chemistry. This is the way of naming that the scientific community uses. Be aware, though, this isn't exactly the same as food ingredients lists. They don't necessarily use IUPAC rules, so there will be some discrepancies when you're looking at food labels. However, you still get some great information about the stuff that you're eating or things you're putting on your body. That's why I love this unit so much. It's one of my favorites. Let's go ahead and get started. Okay, a little review first. In order to be able to name and write the formulas for chemical compounds, we first have to be able to classify them. You need to know basic knowledge of the types of elements on the periodic table to do this. So this is review from our last unit. You need to know your metalloids, nonmetals, and metals, which are diagrammed here for you on your notes, but I want you to add the oxidation number. So we've learned this, but here's a little review. So our hydrogen column is plus one, plus two, plus three. Skip the carbon column, negative three, negative two, negative one, and finally zero. Okay, those are the oxidation numbers that's really important in this unit. Now, for your transition metals and that carbon column, we say that these are multivalent, which means that their oxidation numbers may change. There are things like iron 3, iron 2, iron 4 that exist, so oxidation numbers change in this little section. Be aware of that. Please label this periodic table in your notes. Okay, so classifying compounds, that's the main point of this particular video, is I need you to be able to look at a list of different compounds and know what type they are. First, I need you to know the difference between binary and ternary. So binary compounds are compounds that just have two different elements. So maybe a metal and a nonmetal, or two nonmetals. There's just two different types of elements, like nitrogen and oxygen, for example. Ternary compounds, on the other hand, have three different elements, which means that they are going to include polyatomic ions. So when you think ternary, think polyatomic ions. Something like sodium phosphate is going to have sodium, phosphorus, and oxygen, because phosphate is a polyatomic ion that would make something ternary. So a little way to remember this, a bicycle has two wheels, so a binary compound has two elements. Um, for ternary, that's a little bit harder, but ter starts the T, think three, three different elements. It's a little bit of a stretch, but hopefully that will help. Okay, moving on to our four different compounds, and we need to know about those four different compounds and then to be able to distinguish if they are binary or ternary. Ionic compounds are composed of a metal cation and a non-metal anion. That would be a binary ionic compound. If one or both of these ions are replaced with a polyatomic ion, that would be a ternary ionic compound. So here are some examples. Um, we've got NaCl and K2O. So those are two elements that make that up. We've got metal, nonmetal, metal, nonmetal. So we would say that this is a binary ionic compound. Then we've got NaNO3 and NH4NO3, okay? Both of these have polyatomic ions in them, so they would be ternary ionic compounds. Our next type are molecular compounds. These molecular compounds are composed of two non-metal atoms and sometimes metalloids are present. What's nice about molecular compounds is they're always going to be binary. So water, CO2, BF3, those are all examples of molecular compounds because all these guys are made up of nonmetals and sometimes metalloids. So when you're classifying these four different types, it's important to note that you're looking at what they're made of, 
Okay, so ionic has a metal and a non-metal. Molecular compounds are non-metals only. Okay, acids. Acids are composed of a hydrogen cation, that's really, really important, followed by either a non-metal anion or a polyatomic ion. So if something starts with hydrogen, like all these examples, you know it's an acid, but then you have to distinguish if it's binary or ternary. So HCl and HF, no polyatomic ions, they're acids, but they're binary acids. Then over here, we've got HNO3 and H2SO4. NO3 and SO4 are polyatomic ions, so these are ternary acids. So remember, ternary if it includes a polyatomic ion. Okay, bases. So the bases are composed of a metal cation followed by the hydroxide anion. So these are always ternary because it does contain hydroxide, which is a polyatomic ion. So bases are defined by that hydroxide. So OH, 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 OH. If it has OH, it is a base, and they're always ternary. Okay, at the bottom here it says, one other base that you need to know is ammonia in H3. So a lot of people might think that is molecular because nitrogen and hydrogen are both nonmetals, but that's not true. This is actually a base, so that does need to be memorized. It does not have hydroxide in the formula, but it produces hydroxide ions when it's dissolved in water. Other bases do exist as well, but we're not responsible for their names and formulas. So a little recap. Molecular compounds are always binary. Bases are always ternary. So really, it's ionic and acids that are a little bit harder. So with ionic compounds, you've got a metal and a nonmetal, and sometimes a polyatomic ion. For acids, it always starts with hydrogen. For bases, it always ends in hydroxide. Molecular compounds are always made of nonmetals. So there's distinct features in these four different types. Okay, so that's all for today's video. You can move on to your practice, which is going to have you distinguish the four different types and then decide if they're binary or ternary. Please ask your teacher for help if you're not understanding. Have a great day.